This is Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the mayor of San Bernardino. His name is Kerry Davis. He has been mayor since March 2014. First elective office. Sir, what were you thinking? <laughs> you decided to run for mayor of a city that was bankrupt. But that being said, I know you're working hard and diligently, and San Bernardino really sees uh, bright lights in front of it. Well, thank you. Yeah, please. So tell, talk to us about your job so far. So it, uh, it's a challenge, right. and uh, I knew going in it would be a challenge. Um, and as I uh, uh, stepped into the arena, found that some of the uh, solutions that I had formulated based on some of the problems that I saw mm -hmm. and some of what I thought were some of the foundational uh, right. needs to fix, uh, certainly when you get on the other side, now uh, you get a real picture, right. and that picture changes. And as it changes then, so do some of the solutions that you decide that you're going to have to apply. Um, and then you start to learn about the personalities, and the personalities are very important to uh, try to understand and, and to uh, have the ability to uh, work within that, uh, uh, that arena. And let's talk about the personalities, because for better or for worse, before you arrived um, as mayor, personalities were really driving the debate. There was a lot of contention between various elected officials. I mean, vitriol like, like you've never seen. Um, a lot of those individuals are no longer with the city. Either they were recalled, they lost re-election, chose not to run for office. How is the new regime doing? There are seven council members, there's yourself, there's a new city attorney. How are you all doing? The dynamic has changed, and it's changed significantly, and I think as a result of that, the dialogue is more civil. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean there aren't disagreements. There Which are, is fine. And That's sometimes fine. they get heated. Right. But I think the dialogue does drill down into the issues, and I think that the information that's being brought forth is also helping them to be able to make those decisions, not necessarily in a vacuum. What about the residents of San Bernardino? You know, as you know, San Bernardino, such a proud past. It had been an all-American city in the 70s, really just a crown jewel in the Inland Empire, but you know, with Norton Air Force Base closing, it really just set a, a whole a chain of events that caused the city to spiral. Um, is that pride coming back? Well, I think that's still going to be on the horizon. Mm -hmm. I think that the community probably expects some uh, visual improvement. Mm. Um, faster than what we can really uh, expect. Mm -hmm. uh, the expectation is pretty high, right. especially with the uh, onset of a new uh, city council sure. members, uh, new mayor, new city attorney, new city clerk. Right. So those uh, established, I think, an expectation that certainly is warranted, but not necessarily do the wheels of government move as quickly as you would like them to. So it takes time to right. be able to implement some of those changes. Just getting through the bankruptcy, of that course. bankruptcy is still a, a, a ways away and that will be uh, somewhat of an inhibitor to be able to implement some of the changes that we want to, although that during the period of time that we're working through we are implementing some are of those things. Are you able to implement change or does everything need to go through the trustee? No, it, and it's not a trustee. Uh, judge Jury is the uh, judge that uh, manages this. Uh, right. our, our uh, Chapter 9 bankruptcy. And so we haven't stopped making some of the inroads that we need to. Mm -hmm. uh, there are contracts that we've uh, entered into mm -hmm. uh, recently with the POA. Right. And so even though the confirmation of bankruptcy uh, our, uh, of our plan is still uh, in the future, it doesn't prohibit us from moving forward. So if, there is, if there is an issue, right. then uh, one of the stakeholders will take it to jury and she'll indicate whether or not she's going to honor that uh, motion or not. I see. So you don't need to consistently seek approval of the judge, as you described. Not unless there's an objection to it. And then if there is an objection, Objection to it, for instance, our contracting out a fire. Right. Uh, fire put up an objection to that. And we went to uh, the city uh, to uh, judge jury, uh -huh. uh, and she uh, indicated no. You, uh, the the city can uh, contract out because the uh, motion that was put forth was that the charter didn't allow it, and so I she see. ruled on that, and we were able to move forward. Your timing to become mayor was pretty good, just as the recession was ending and the economy was bouncing back. Uh, we saw Amazon come in to open a major distribution center. Talk to us more about the exciting economic development that is going on in the city of San Bernardino. Well, thanks for uh, 
bringing that topic up because there are a number of items that are uh, on the horizon. Uh, San Manuel Gateway College, yes, which yes. Uh, is a uh, partnership with San Manuel Band of Indians and sure. also with Loma Linda University uh, and, and the city, as well as uh, San Manuel City Unified School District. Right. That'll be uh, a 150,000 square foot building. It's a 50 to 70 million dollar project. Fantastic. The project will end up with a, uh, a clinic. That clinic will serve uh, approximately 30,000 uh, residents. Is it a, a private institution? What, what is it exactly, the Gateway College? It, it's a Loma Linda run facility. I see, I see, and okay. Part so, of the Loma Linda University system. Correct. I understand. And, uh, it will, so it will house a college uh, to uh, develop skills for uh, medical disciplines. Fantastic. It will also uh, uh, have the clinic. It will have a uh, pharmacy and it will also uh, house a restaurant. And the timing is also good. You have San Bernardino Unified School District on the rise. We see graduation rates are increasing at the school district. Um, so education seems to be one of the drivers of San Bernardino's comeback. It is. And uh, in relationship to the San Manuel Gateway College, Indian Springs High School, which is uh, focused on some of the uh, uh, more scientific uh, mm. Uh, educational pursuits will be one of the feeder schools for the San Manuel nice. Gateway College. Cal State San Bernardino continues to be a bright light in your community. Is it in city limits, by the way? It is. It is, which is great news because it's an economic driver, lots of sales tax, I presume. There's a housing project, I understand, that is going to be put up near uh, Cal State San Bernardino. In city limits or not? Yes. Great. Okay, so tell us about the housing project. It's called the Glen. It's called the Glen. Mm -hmm. The Glen will house uh, approximately uh, over 600 students. Mm -hmm. uh, it will also... Then ah, so it's for the students. Terrific. Most of it is for the students. There will be 64 uh, single family units also. Fantastic. It's a mixed use to, uh, master plan project. There will be shopping, there will be retail, there will be jobs that it will also provide. And it's just south of uh, the uh, the campus. And so, um, Makes sense in a lot of ways. If you think about how universities can really be magnets and create catalytic consequences for surrounding communities, I can see why the developer is jumping on board and why you're working to make that happen. Well, and it'll also then help to attract uh, students, uh, uh, international students. Right. Uh, it's designed to uh, be a little bit uh, more luxury for student housing. Let's talk about the most important thing, and that's food. Because we know that food <laughs> is critically important, and food has become an, an economic driver. It's amazing, you know, with the Amazons of the world, people are not going out to shop as much, but they're going out to eat. And so you're helping them eat at food trucks. Who would have thought 10 years ago would want to go to a food truck? But food trucks are the kind of the new hip thing. You're making food trucks more uh, accessible in San Bernardino. Our community uh, development director, uh, about a year ago, uh, kicked off this idea. Right. It was back in October of 2014 Perfect. was when we he held our first one. There were five food trucks back then and they were a little leery about actually coming into San Bernardino. Yeah, was there a law that prevented it? I'm trying to remember. Well, I think the county had some restrictions. That's what it is. Okay, yeah. thank you, sir. So, uh, our community development director actually put up his own credit card to secure the uh, guarantee for the first five food trucks that would come to town. But that's the can-do spirit of your and, city right now. And it was very successful. Mm -hmm. And it's from that time now we're uh, approaching a year and we now have upwards of about 2,500 people. Third Thursdays they're called? Third Thursday. Where? Food, and that's at City Hall at Court Street Square. Nice, nice. Going very well. So I just want to congratulate you on your successes. I know it's been a tumultuous couple of years for San Bernardino, but no doubt you and your colleagues on the City Council, the residents, are really looking forward to a very bright future. And I look forward to having you back on the program so we can talk more about the exciting things Thank in you your very great much. city. His name is Kerry Davis. He is the mayor of San Bernardino. My name is Brad Paul. And this is Charter Local Edition.